Uh, Mia is going to talk to us about uh, building an inclusive uh, economy. Uh, Mia is a colleague of mine, uh, also in the commercial litigation and property uh, department. Uh, Mia attained her LLB degree with distinction from the University of Pretoria. Um, she joined Adams in uh, 2017. Um, and was admitted as a legal practitioner um, in 2019. Mia has gained broad experience in a number of fields, but has focused mostly on competition and antitrust law, financial regulatory compliance, arbitration, and general commercial litigation. Mia continues to advance her studies and is currently enrolled for, I think completed, right Mia? Yes, completed her master's degree in EU competition law at King's College uh, London. Mia. Today, we are showcasing and celebrating African enterprise. A key characteristic of an African enterprise is the principle of inclusivity. This is a principle entrenched in our constitutional values, most notably Ubuntu, which recognizes that I am because we are. As South Africans, we strive to see inclusivity demonstrated in all spheres of life including within our economy. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Mia de Jager, and today I would like to talk to you about a recent study conducted by the South African Competition Commission that found that we are still falling short of a truly inclusive economy. Although there are various manifestations of underrepresentation within our economy, this study specifically showcased the barriers faced by women in their participation in the South African economy. The conversation about gender and racial inequality is not a new one. We would, however, be remiss not to acknowledge the progress that has been made. In politics, we now have 26 female head of state. Globally, women also account for 24.9% of parliamentarians. In business this year, for the first time, women CEOs run more than 10% of the Fortune 500 companies. Locally, we can also celebrate significant appointments, such as Mary Villacazi, who will be the first female CEO of First Rand Bank. In education, women comprise approximately 43% of permanent academic staff in higher public education. In entertainment, we have some amazing female powerhouses who are flying the flag high for female representation. I'm talking about your Beyonce's, your Greta Gerwig with her recent success in the Barbie movie, and then locally, of course, Bonang, whose successes stems over multiple empires. Even just looking at the attendance of today's conference makes it clear that we are on a positive trend towards more balanced representation. These hard-earned gains are encouraging, yet fragile. We can't ignore that the curve is still very much unbalanced. When discussing gender-based barriers, it's important to know that men are not the problem. They can, however, be part of the solution. Today's discussion looks at women in business from a different perspective, and that is through the lens of competition law. Now, competition law aims to promote various stakeholders, including consumers, employees, competitors, and even potential competitors. However, above all, competition law aims to promote the competitive process, which indirectly benefits all of these stakeholders. The competition authorities recognize the benefit of competitive markets, since these allow consumers to benefit from better prices, better quality of goods and services, more innovation and more choice. Barriers to entry and expansion are a significant hindrance to competitive markets. These barriers ultimately result in a reduced competition in the markets, which in turn adversely impacts the competitive process. For markets to be competitive, they need to be accessible. The Competition Commission, at the end of August, notably being Women's Month, concluded a three-year study entitled Promoting Effective Entry and Participation of Women Entrepreneurs in the South African Economy. 
The commission noted that despite women starting businesses at a higher rate, they remained highly unrepresented in more profitable markets and leadership positions. The study, which was undertaken as part of the Commission's advocacy initiative, analyzed why women were underrepresented in business. They found that women faced certain gender-based barriers that hindered their ability to effectively compete in high income generating markets. These barriers negatively affected the meaningful participation of women in South Africa's economy. And I repeat, for markets to be competitive, they need to be accessible. The first barrier identified in the Commission study is access to business knowledge, education and training programs. Now, the study found that there is a direct positive correlation between business skills and experience and the ability to identify and seize sustainable business opportunities. The reasons explored by the Commission include that women typically had less formal business qualifications, largely due to funding constraints and domestic responsibilities. They also found that women typically had less access to formal mentorship programs and networking opportunities compared to their male counterparts. The second significant barrier identified in the Commission study is access to finance for startup or expansion. As you know, you typically need money to make money. The study found that women owned fewer assets against which loans were typically advanced. For example, research conducted in 2018 on the ownership of land found that approximately 13% of black females owned land compared to 36% of black males. They also found that participants in the study typically had less knowledge about alternative funding sources. Accordingly, the majority of female owned businesses started as a result of personal loans or through accessing personal savings. And unfortunately, the ceiling on these type of funding arrangements are lower. The third barrier identified in the Commission study is access to profitable markets. This is largely due to the fact that women entrepreneurs have less access to productive resources, such as land, financial capital, or labor that are necessary for business expansion. For example, the Commission found that female businesses were more concentrated in low income generating markets, such as retail, customer service, arts and crafts, entertainment and hospitality. They found that females were underrepresented in more profitable areas such as construction, mining and agriculture. The study also revealed that government largely remains an inaccessible market for women. They estimate that in sub-Saharan South Africa, that women-owned businesses win approximately 1% of public procurement contracts. This is despite a 40% procurement allocation aimed at female empowerment, as was showcased in a recent study entitled, A Promise Without Commitment. The fourth barrier is compliance, requirements, bureaucracy, and administration. This ties back to the first barrier, which is that women typically have less access to business knowledge where they would be exposed to information regarding business operational, administrative, and other regulatory requirements for the startup or expansion of a business. The participants in the commission study also noted that constraints, timing constraints due to domestic responsibilities was a significant hindrance for females' participation in the economy. The fifth barrier relates to access to women networks and support structures. One of the key predictors of entrepreneurial success is the strength of an entrepreneur's social network. Networking can result in a range of new opportunities and provide a platform to learn, share experiences, knowledge and expertise. Research shows that it is harder for women to participate in such networks particularly in male dominated sectors where networking takes place on golf courses, shooting ranges or at sporting events. Despite this, the Commission also found that there were some positive developments uh, for women focused entrepreneurs through the development of breakfast forums or online support platforms. 
The study also recognizes the impact of social factors that pose a stumbling block to participation in female uh, ownership in economy. These factors include safety, customary practices, domestic responsibilities, and societal expectations. In a recent study entitled Women in the Workplace, conducted by McKinsey, they reported that hybrid working or a flexible working arrangement were top company benefits only second to medical care. According to McKinsey's study, 38% of mothers with young children say that without workplace flexibility, that they would have had to leave their company or reduce their working hours. Now, as a first time mom to a nine month old baby, I really resonate with the study and makes me very grateful that my employer supports a flexible working arrangement. The impact of unconscious gender bias is another factor that cannot be discounted. For example, in a recent study dissected in the Harvard Law Review, they found that making jokes in a presentation helped men, but actually harmed women. So if you're wondering why I'm not making cheesy notes, uh, jokes today, I'll leave that to Cohen. You can blame the Harvard Law Review for that. The problem with unconscious gender bias is that we do not have the ability to recognize it in ourselves, even though we might be able to see it in others. I would like to pause at this point by jumping to another study entitled the Heidi and Howard uh, investigation conducted at the Columbia Business School so this study was based on a successful venture capitalist by the name of Heidi Rosen. So the professor in this class presented a case study to the students, largely based on Heidi's life. Uh, he then asked the class to rate this person based on competence and likability. So to half of the class, this case study and the scenarios that the person faced was presented as Heidi, which is a recognizable female name. And to the other half of the class, this person was presented as Howard. The class was then asked to rate them according to competence and likability. So interestingly, Heidi was significantly less likable. The more assertive the females found this venture capitalist to be, the more they rejected her. This is referred to as the competence likability dilemma faced by women, where there is a negative correlation between competence success on the one side and likability on the other. Men, however, had the opposite experience, where the more successful they were perceived to be, the better they were received. We are striving for a world where women are represented in all spheres of life. We also hope to enter an era where women can be viewed to be competent without it detracting from her likability. I conclude this presentation by summarizing the pro-competitive recommendations that the Commission made in order to promote the participation of females in South Africa's economy. So firstly, to recognize that females do face certain gender-based barriers. Once we recognize these barriers, we can start taking more intentional steps towards remedying them. The solution will require collaboration by all stakeholders, including government, private sector, regulators, and market participants. To bridge the gap on access to information, the champions of industry, many of whom are in this room, needs to set up informal networking and information sharing sessions. You can start small and use the platform to learn from shared experiences, to impart knowledge and to establish a circle of trust. As part of offering empowerment opportunities, companies should offer skills transfer and training programs, partnership as well as subcontracting initiatives, which could help spur the participation of women in South Africa's economy. In respect of preferential procurement, the private sector and government should adopt gender inclusive measures and guidelines for engaging with women entrepreneurs. As alternative funding models, we can also push government to enhance access to information for sector specific guidelines of alternative funding solutions that are available. 
Companies can also look at offering uh, or adapting gender sensitive criteria when assessing their business relationships with female. For example, offering extended loans based on less access to security. Businesses should also look to meeting the needs of their employees. This might mean something different depending on the business that you find yourself in and your unique operational requirements, but at least do make your employees feel like they have a voice. The Commission study shows that much still needs to be done in order to promote the effective and meaningful participation of females in South Africa's economy. This is something that will require a concerted effort and collaboration across all sectors to ensure that women and all marginalized groups in society are afforded equal opportunities. An inclusive economy means that there should be equal opportunities for growth and expansion, regardless of race, gender, and age. Let's play our part and start taking steps towards a truly inclusive economy. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks so much, Mia. Um, and I see with a few seconds to spare, that's the precision that I expect from Mia. Um, Mia, just maybe I'll start off the, the questioning, uh, the question section, just by, I just want to know the, the status of the report. I mean, obviously in South Africa, we have all these reports and commissions. What is the status of the Competition Commission's report? Uh, on, on this issue. Sure, Cohen. So this project and this research proposal was conducted as part of the Commission's advocacy initiative. So the Commission, and if you've ever dealt with them, they've got many different divisions, including your mergers, your com market conduct, your cartels division, and we're now dealing with the advocacy in, uh, um, division. So essentially, the advocacy division's role is to promote compliance with the Competition Act through non-enforcement means. So unfortunately, the status of these recommendations are only recommendations at this stage. However, it does give you key insight into what is front of mind when the Commission does deal with parties. We see that specifically with them pushing for certain public interest considerations when considering mergers or settlements. And these realities faced by uh, market participants in South Africa and the outcomes of their study tends to inform how the Commission does view these objectives, but they are only recommendations. Uh, I recently saw these recommendations and some of the Commission's outcomes being referred to as, as a paper tiger. Um, as much as they're useful, they don't have any teeth. So that is where the status of, of the recommendations. Any other questions? Thank you very much, Mia. Questions from the house? The one there at the back. Thanks. Not a, not a question, just a comment I wanted to make on the Heidi Rosen case. Yes. I recently uh, attended um, Harvard and uh, we actually did the, the case. Oh, lovely. Um, so, you know, sort of 47 countries represented in the room, probably, you know, uh, two thirds male, about a third, a third female or less possibly. Um, and the conversation is extremely interesting in not it wasn't focused specifically on the likability you know mm -hmm. component of it but just the the perceptions and those biases playing out regardless of jurisdiction mm -hmm. regardless of you know educational background i almost want to say regardless of you know people's seniority in 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 management and in leadership that you would anticipate being you know more more uh, you know mature in their view yes. of of, uh, of of females etc and probably about a balanced view in terms of those that that liked her and those that didn't and a quite shocking response in being faced with the fact that if this was a man mm. what would your opinion have, have been so yeah very very useful one to reference and yeah Great for, great for including it. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. And it's interesting to know that this, this study is an ongoing discussion and it's very much a, a conversation starter. Um, I saw uh, it was a riddle the other day where they essentially mentioned something along the line that uh, a father and a son were in a car accident where tragically the father passed away. They rushed the boy to the hospital and when the surgeon started operating, uh, the surgeon said, I can't, this is my son. 
and they said, please solve the riddle. And the majority of the responses were, well, maybe he's got a stepdad or two dads. Nobody thinking, well, the surgeon might have been his mother. Mm -hmm. It's just a female. So there's these unconscious gender biases, unfortunately, have really infiltrated in our society. As much as I said, we can recognize that there's been fantastic gains. Mm -hmm. uh, there is that, that, that little internal clock that you sometimes just need to reset and, and check yourself that you aren't contributing towards that. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Mia. And in the same vein, maybe I, I just want to then ask, I mean, it might be obvious, but why why did the commission feel the need to undertake this, this study? Like a PR thing? What, what was it? No, I, I think... <laughs> I think the, the advocacy division, they, they often try and like get a temperature of the market and what are some of the realities that are being faced. So we saw a similar study not long ago on, on basically food prices going up and the commission trying to see, well, why is that happening? So it's very much they, they, they see what are the current trends. They see that they don't see females represented in many of the um, cases that cross their path and as part of the advocacy, which is also somewhat a, a how can I say knowledge sharing platform and a public awareness uh, initiative, they said, well, there's obviously an issue, there's obviously barriers because we see in that the, the, there's underrepresentation by females. So it wasn't triggered in response to a complaint, but but more so just as part of their public awareness. And I see that I am right on time. Right. Thanks, Go. <laughs> Thanks so much, everyone, for joining us in this room. Um, I would invite you to make your way over to the main room where we were in this morning, if you, if you were part of that session. The talk that will be presented there is on ESCOM and the courts, which I think is going to be a heated, interesting debate and discussion. Thank you very much. Thank you.